Sounds familiar? That's because you're probably reminded of this popular earworm. Hey Ben. Hey. How are you, man? Hello, sir. Good to see you. You too, you too. Come, come. <laughs> so, I actually want to ask you, what made you decide to do that Taifan music video? The truth is, we really love Taifan. And more than that, I think um, it's the struggle of learning the dishes and ordering. That's why I wrote a song. Okay. It's my form of apology. <laughs> it is a commentary, obviously, on us being Singaporean Chinese, we still struggle to name the dishes. Well, we all learned our mother tongue for many years. Yeah, we do. Why do you think we're so bad at it? I was born into a non-Chinese speaking family. Like, I am a British Singaporean. I would say that, like, I am too bad for, like, normal standard. And I'm like a C6 okay. for all levels. The only Mandarin exposure I really had since young was my swimming coach, who was oh. from China. So, right. if you talk to me about swimming, I can rattle off in Chinese for hours. <laughs> but everything else is uh, not up to standard, for sure. Because it was a Mandarin-speaking environment. 100%. How do you we say freestyle in Mandarin? Uh, oh, Zhirong. Zhirong. Warong. Warong. And treading water? Uh, 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 Puyaosi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's the answer, but I know it's That's not That's the exact yeah. uh, scientific term. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, do, I do feel like we should endeavor to be better, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even simple tasks like ordering my Thai fan already stretches my Chinese abilities. And I'm not the only one who's struggling with the proficiency of the language. So in this episode of Talking Point, I actually want to find out why we aren't as proficient in our mother tongue. And is there a better way for our kids to learn it? First, I need to establish the proficiency standard of our mother tongue now. I'm starting with a matchup. Competing are 12 year olds from Singapore. They will be facing off with Gwendolyn from Hong Kong, Tarun from Chennai, and Sharifa from Kuala Lumpur. Hey guys, come on in! The students will attempt our PSLE, or Primary School Leaving Examination Mother Tongue Paper. What is this word? This word, I haven't seen it before. The Sengi. I don't know if the Han is pinging for Tun Jing. The Jing, does it end with a G or does it stop at N? Ah, you know what, I'll just put this. Alright guys, time is up, hands down. Can I have your papers please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the kids are all done with their mother tongue papers. Let's now get these papers safely packed off to have them graded. Packed and sealed. The results will be released in a few days. Hey guys, I have your results. <gasps> oh. Ta-da! Oh. That is really good. I just got 83. I got AL1 again. Turns out, our local kids fared better in all the mother tongue papers, which honestly caught me by surprise. So does that mean we're actually more proficient in it than we think? Or is this the reason? There are more than 180 enrichment centres offering mother tongue in Singapore. And sign-up rates at some of them have grown by up to 76% over the past 3 to 5 years. This ex-teacher says, 
is responsible for helping more than half his students score AL1 and 2 in Malay. My job as a tutor is primarily is to prepare them for the exam so that they can score. So it's all about scoring? It's all about scoring. That's what the parents told me. Although my personal task is to make sure that they love the language. But what we are doing now, at the end of the day, their grades matter. Do good grades translate into someone being effectively bilingual? That is a very subjective question. I have children scoring A1 during O levels. But five years down the road, they can tell me. I actually forget everything you taught me. Yeah. They say, well, then they, 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 the A1s, where did they go? I said, no, no, because I haven't practiced. Huh? No, I go to my workplace, nobody speaks to me. At home, at home also, nobody speaks to me. In the end, I lose it. Singapore's latest census data shows that fewer Singaporeans are speaking their mother tongue at home. Those who spoke Mandarin at home dropped from 35.6 to 29.9%. Malay from 12.2 to 9.2%. And Tamil from 3.3 to just 2.5%. So at home, we speak only English, which means the kids have practically no exposure to Chinese at all. And since that's the case, I'm wondering if schools can step up. Sung Chen Wei is the man in charge of general curriculum planning for schools across Singapore. So with many of our kids, we're not speaking mother tongue at home. You know, my kids don't speak Chinese at home. How is the school trying to help with this situation? One of the most important things that schools can do for them is to help them enjoy the learning of the languages. Once the kid enjoys the learning of the languages, even if the home environment does not create many opportunities, he or she may actually end up engaging on it on his or her own. The kids have about six hours of mother tongue uh, lessons in school. Is that really adequate? We must be mindful that the total load remains manageable for our students. So if you keep extending mother tongue languages, I think the kids will have a longer and more tiring school day as well. My challenge is that I don't speak Mandarin well, and if I attempted to speak to my kids, I'm afraid that I may actually be teaching them the, the wrong things. And at the end of the day, they end up being weak in both Chinese and English. I think at least create a home environment that encourages the learning of the language, making available mother tongue language books, uh, encouraging their kids to uh, access uh, mother tongue uh, programs on televisions or listen to those songs in the mother tongue languages, right? But even for parents who are not as conversant, I think it's really inspiring to the children to see their parents also attempting to use and become better in their mother okay. tongue languages. So I should be playing some like Chinese music when we're driving the car, <laughs> maybe they like that better. I usually don't speak Chinese to my kids because I don't want my poor command of the language to affect them. But maybe it's about me showing them that I'm not too old to get better at it. So while you can't be too old, but can you be too young to start learning a second language? Okay, you wonder, you wonder. Is this the secret to lifelong proficiency? Okay? So, how exactly did I end up in this situation? E, well, I found a learning centre that offers Chinese enrichment classes to children less than two years old. Can you believe it? So, I want to ask you a few questions. Uh, oh, you mm. okay. <笑>好
他们不会觉得它是一种声音，他会、okay. 大脑会告诉他，其实它是一种语言。啊、uh, ，所以这个其实也就是为什么要尽早让孩子学习华语。OK， 所以说因为不是不是真的学学这样、嗯，可是给他们习惯，好像习惯听到这些华语的字、嗯、啊，这个 environment 啦，给他们。我等一下就有一节课。真的吗？对，你要不要去试试给他们讲故事？讲故事啊？对，好吧，<笑>来，我们去。嗯。So here I am as a teaching assistant for the day, trying to see how much a two-year-old can learn. 好吧，我们开始。我跟你讲故事。谁知道这个是什么？这个一个一个猴子。你喜欢吃香蕉吗？谁喜欢吃香蕉？你要你要 peel 那个 skin， 人会吃。Then this happens. 快来帮帮忙吧！我们一起摘，我们一起摘，我们一起摘。To be frank, 摘摘 they just all sound the same to me. 三只小猴走了过来，他们要摘那个。是老师，老师不是摘，它是摘摘香蕉。对了，为什么不可以用？呃，拆，是把它全部拆开。哦，来拆拆那个 window 开。那不是都是打开？不一样。By now, the teacher probably regrets offering me this position. 要完了，要完了，所以他们就全部一个一起可以吃香蕉，香蕉，香蕉真好吃，谢谢，谢谢。You know, it's really hard work trying to keep a, a group of uh, kids uh, engaged for a long time. And I really can't see what these kids who are less than two years old can truly learn from a session like that. It's hard to imagine. They are learning something. They are developing their oral language skills. Mm -hmm. They are trying to pick up new words and also they are developing their grammar. This is Dr. Sun He. She is so good in Mandarin because her parents spoke the language to her since birth. There are some experiments when the uh, monolingual speakers pass the nine, nine months old, actually they gradually uh, uh, lose the ability to distinguish the foreign uh, phonemes, foreign sounds. Some people argue before age of four, some will argue before your puberty at the age of 13 and 14. So very different, you know, age range. However, the, the uh, same, uh, similar message, that is you should acquire a new language at right. a young age, because then you can easily attain the native-like pronunciation and grammar. So like, I'm really bad with my Mandarin, but I started learning it when I was seven, eight years old in primary school. If I had started like these kids at two, would I be better at it today? <laughs> There's no straight answer. Okay. Uh, you have a higher chance to acquire this language better. Okay, higher chance. Yeah. Right. But besides your uh, language environment, another important factor that will influence your learning, mm -hmm. your language aptitude, you know IQ. Yeah. So it seems that uh, when we learn a new language, we also have a language IQ, how fast you can pick up a language. Most people think you can't really change it. You, okay. you couldn't train it. This is your nature. For some of these children, they could be highly motivated, but still not be very good at the subject. Can be, uh, theoretically, because they can be low in language aptitude. So my standard of Mandarin is disastrous. Could it be due to the fact that I have maybe no aptitude for Mandarin at all? Steve, I have a lemma test for really? adults. Okay. Would you like to try? Sure, I want to know. I'm attempting the vocabulary test and have been given three minutes to memorize as many characters here. This assesses my ability to associate unfamiliar characters to unfamiliar names. A test on my memory. Nah, pretty easy. Until... Oh, they changed the order. This test is rigged because first of all, these are characters that don't exist. They are names that don't exist. And then they jumble them all up right after I remember them in an order. Click for your results. Dun, dun, dun. The maximum score is 20. Your score was... <laughs> this test is not a good test of my language aptitude. Because look at me speaking so fluently to you in English. Do you in Chinese? I you, 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 I you
Steve, you just finished one component of this length aptitude test. I only scored one out of 20 for this section on learning new vocabulary, which is relatively low. The system shows me that most people scored a five. The earlier your exposure to second language, the better you'll be at it. And this critical head start is even more important, especially if your language aptitude is poor like mine. And this leaves me with just one last thing to investigate. How to make the learning of mother tongue more fun. I thought you were studying, but this looks like you're playing a game. Now, it may not seem like it, but I am actually here to spoil their fun by asking about schoolwork. What's your favorite subject in school? English. English. Art. What about mother tongue? Do you like that? No. No? No? Yeah, it's a Why tough, not? It's a tough subject. English. I don't like mother tongue. Clearly, those kids find mother tongue learning a chore. Which is why I'm meeting Kairos. He actually enjoys revising his Chinese. Hello, hello, hi Michael. Hi Steve. Yeah, I'm here to see Kairos. Oh, uh, Kairos uh, is studying in his room. Oh really? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I jump in and check on him. Sure. Okay, let's check in on Kairos and see if he's really studying. Kairos! Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I thought you were studying, but this looks like you're playing a game. No, I am studying. Really? Yeah. How can that be? It helps me revise my Chinese. Okay, what's the name of this game? Uh, pet battle. Can you show me how it works? Yeah, so I have a lot of pets. They're on different levels. I'm supposed to use like some of my pets, right? Uh -huh. To fight another pet. Let me try. I think it's something high, something so I've got oh yeah. They all have high. <laughs> hi yeah. <laughs> um Bing Hai One Am I saying it correctly? How would you say it? Bing Hai Wan. Bing Hai Wan. So what happens if you get it wrong? You get it wrong and then after that when you shoot, you miss. Do you find that you are learning when you are playing this game? Yeah, because every week they like sort of change the questions like what I learn on the Okay. Lesson. Hey Uncle Steve, yep. why not we play daily challenge and compete against each other? Really? Okay, yeah. no problem. I mean, you're only in primary five, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you go first. I think it's this one. This is the... I'm not telling you because we're competing. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to write this? In less than five minutes, Kairos is all done. The pressure is on me now. Uh, Did you just get all ten correct? Yeah. No problem, I can do this. Okay. okay. <laughs> I can't even read. Um, let's just go yellow. Oh, lucky. Yes! <laughs> I still don't know what that is, but it was the correct answer. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go with this. Ah! No, it's wrong! With a bit of guessing skills, I managed to score an 8 out of 10. Woohoo! I can see why this game is quite fun, and I'm learning at the same time. Yeah. Do you do you think more. if not for this game, do you think you will not enjoy Chinese so much? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think I did. You know, it, it actually brought back a lot of memories of stuff I learned in primary school. Words which I had forgotten, I remembered again, and it was actually kind of fun. So I was just thinking, if we had stuff like that, it'd be so much easier to learn Chinese. Don't have to worry about the what things yeah, then one turn one tongue, then pay, they don't know what to word and all that kind of stuff. I'm curious to meet the man who can take the dread away from revising mother tongue. 
kids, they love games. We know that kids like Pokemon and when they complete the pet battle, they get a pet and then they can just merge it and it becomes, you know, a stronger pet. So we decided, could we actually create something similar whereby the way they capture pets and level pets is just by answering Chinese questions. When kids actually log in regularly, they naturally improve and then they get more confident, which gives them more interest in the language. Okay, so, so in a way, this is taking them through a bit of practice. Yeah. They're answering questions, they're just doing it in a more fun way. Exactly, exactly. How do you ensure that the game is challenging enough, but yet also fun? Your system needs to be able to um, adapt to your child's standard while making it fun, of course. So what happens if the child finds a question too easy? That's where your AI engine needs to be smart about it. For kids who are weak at things, you need to scaffold it down. And once they have actually gotten it, you need to scaffold it up. So that way you broaden your vocabulary. I think specifically for languages, there is no one size fits all approach. Why aren't we seeing it in more schools? Many teachers still prefer a more uh, traditional approach. But I think we're seeing a definite uptrend in schools using gamification and games, always about striking the balance. You still definitely need to ensure that after they play the game, they are still doing their, their written assignment. So is there a better way for us to teach our kids their mother tongue? I certainly think so. I mean, more early exposure to learning, perhaps more creative ways of teaching the language, all that will certainly help. Because, you know, I've seen my own Chinese proficiency as a bit of a handicap, which is why I'm here today for my first ever Chinese radio interview. <laughs> this is going to be exciting. I'm hoping all those Chinese songs I've been listening to in the car will actually help. Let's find out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.